Welcome to Road Atlanta, round two action of the Apex E Series by Cooltech. We're going to see some of Latin America's best sim racers at their finest level of talent. All coverage today on RaceBot TV, streaming live on our Racing Live. Don't miss it. Qualifying and the race coming up after the ad break. one was as thrilling as you'd expect and our track car combination of the radical sr8 at monza didn't disappoint either now though we move on to road atlanta not only will that prove a challenge for some of latin america's best sim racers but so will the ferrari 458 gte the car selected for this round as we welcome you to road atlanta in the united states of america which hosts round two action of the apex e series by Cooltech. All coverage today on RaceBot TV, streaming live from iRacing Live around the 4.088 kilometer, 2.54 mile layout of Road Atlanta. Clockwise, of course, as you can see there on screen, we're using the full course layout. Elevation change up to 125 feet or 38 meters, depending on your units of choice. That's the highest point at turn nine, all the way down to the lowest point at turn five. 50 minutes of racing action coming up as well and a beautiful sunny sky ready to please the drivers here this afternoon good afternoon everybody jonathan simon on hand in the commentary booth alongside alvin yeves who's going to join me all season along with hugo luis behind the scenes in production we're in the closing stages of qualifying alvin johnny guindy currently holds the provisional pole spot he had a great battle with roberto montero last round and went down to the final lap it was a great battle in the last time at Monza and Johnny Gindy had to push for everything he got. Yes, he was he looked like he was dominating in that first half, but as soon as the restart happened, well, Roberto Montero came in and, and fight, but 
it wasn't enough and Johnny Indy was able to come up with the win but also another person that had a good race was the first uh, driver who came in P3 and that was Sergio Durelli. Yep, exactly. Durelli claimed the podium too. He did finish 11 seconds behind the leaders. Guindy and Montero were only separated by two tenths of a second. At the moment, though, Guindy leads the top of the timing sheets by half a second ahead of Jorge Flores in that second position. He shares the front row with him, Moises Carabolo and Danaciano Martinez, currently on that provisional second row, followed by Montero and Durelli, who we just mentioned. And Alvin, this road Atlanta track, lots of elevation change, very very little margin for error. This is a real uh, challenge for these drivers, only in round two. It'll definitely be a, a real challenge that they will have in here today. And just a little quick note, the car that we are racing today is the Ferrari 488, not the 458. The 458 used to be a race here not uh, very long ago, but now we are racing on the 488 GTE. And it provides a really interesting combination because this car, it is... Uh, from the new breed of GTE cars, uh, if you compare with the Ford GT, for example, it's 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 it's, it's a really interesting car because it's what you call a GT car versus the Ford GT, which is more of a prototype. So today we are racing with the Ferrari, so it'll be interesting, very important for these cars to use as much of the curves as possible to get the belt the most out of the car in here today. Yep, exactly, and uh, only. It's qualifying almost over, only a minute 30 remaining, drivers still out there lapping away, but this checkered flag's gone, so these are just the last few laps coming in, Alex Dialba climbs to the 8th position there, so late lap from Alex Dialba in that cool tech racing car, and so series sponsor, sponsoring Alex Dialba there, Alvin, good for him, he's impressing now. Definitely impressive, but I gotta say, Johnny Gindy with another fantastic lap there in, in, in the in the provisional pole position we only have three or four drivers are left here uh uh that they perhaps can dethrone johnny in the front pole position although very unlikely but hey you never know but i gotta say when you are in 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 pole position almost half a second you are doing something good for sure yeah exactly so we'll have a look at the grid i think because this session is essentially over it's still in the uh, I don't think anybody is out there on track at the moment looking at our timing screen. So let's take a look at that for round two of the Apex E series by Cooltech. Johnny Guindy, as we mentioned, a dominant position time of a 1 minute 18.088. Is he clutch? Can he execute it? Come the race. And will he win two out of two to start this season? He's joined by Jorge Flores on that front row, followed by Carabolo and Martinez, who share the second row. They're going to be screaming through the field, hopefully, in those early laps to make it through quickly and unscathed. Montero Dorelli, you can see fifth and sixth, followed by Vita and D'Alba. Rounding out the top 10, it's Andres Espinosa and Emmanuel Lopez. And you got Roche, Hector Aguirre, two drivers there on that sixth row who are very quick and should be able to make their way up through the field. So are uh, Jordi Maldonado and Miguel Maya, 13th and 14th. Rest of the field will be on your screen as Ruben Garcia rounds out the top 15. We have a 32 car field out here today, Alvin. A bit more than we had in round one, a tighter circuit, much more difficult to overtake. I remember when we were here about a year ago for this series at Road Atlanta, and it was an amazing race. Lots of battling. I think the tougher tracks make sure, make the drivers have to earn it a little bit more. It certainly does, and I think one of the toughest places that we are going that we, that we will have in here today, I think two locations. Once we go into turn three, the top part of the the top part as soon as we get out of turn one and two and then turn five and turn five uh, that'll be it the real car record in here today because yes you can run really wide you can use those curves but you have to be really careful you have to be really confident otherwise the slightest mistake and you're gonna send the car into the wall yeah so of course full tech now a series sponsor as well thanks to them for their support this series and we know that the reward for our winner is a Cooltech RS simulator uh, priced uh, very highly as well, along with a steering wheel and pedals. That is for your series champion. Uh, second and third place, we'll get an iRacing gift card. There's also a raffle as well for a Cooltech gamer chair. You can see they're on screen as well. That is a sexy prize, Alvin, and I would love to be racing in this series. You should take it on next season. Commentate while you're racing and you'll have a shot at this, uh, this seat over here. Uh, I think it'll be it'll be kind of hard. I can hardly walk and chew bubble gum <laughs> at the same time. 
So yeah. trying to do that, and then when you consider that English is not my primary language, so trying to do commentary on my secondary language plus racing, nah, you know what? I pretty much gotta choose one. Although I would have wished that this was last season as I won the championship, but hey, things happen. Uh, we will have a pace lap to begin this race, so um, no rush here, no standing start in the Ferrari 488 GTE. A couple of drivers now trying to get a move on here, as you can see, pace car away for the formation lap. Now, this is where the nerves build, Alvin. I always remember as a driver here, you're just trying to warm the tires, talk to your spotter if you can, just to cool yourself down. So those breathing techniques that also come into play here to cool yourself down too. It does, and now it's really the time to try to dial down everything. We have to remember that at minute 25, we will have a yeah. competition yellow. So now the question is for, for many of these drivers, why do you come into the pits? Because you will have to come into the pits. These cars are limited in fuel as well, so that kind of plays into the strategy. When do you come? Do you wait all the way to the competition yellow to come into the pits do you come before and try to gain that track position and that'll be really important because at minute 25 when that competition yellow comes out we also hand points to the top 10 drivers so uh, do you go for points or do you go for track position at the second half yeah exactly at yeah. minute 25 as alvin said p1 will get 25 points at race ends they'll get 50 points so um very very close indeed with those two and uh, as we know, Johnny Grindy, after the round one, leads that championship by a wide margin already. So uh, I think for Johnny today, he's got that qualifying pace. Do you think he's be able to do that in the race? Maybe he's focused too much on the qualifying. Well, we'll find out anyway, I guess, in a minute's time. We'll find out for sure, but we also have, we, but we also have to remember that the, all these drivers are driving the same setup, so pretty much they were all driving the, the same fuel loads as well, so I don't think it's, it's really going to be an issue. I think this is the pace that Johnny Gindy is racing, and, and, and considering the pace that he had on the previous round, yes, it was a different car. I think we're going to see pretty much the same thing with Johnny Gindy, but hey, that's why we race here. That's why the race is 50 minutes. So until the from the green flag, from from the green flag all the way to the checker flag, anything can happen. Yep. So we come to the closing stages of this pace lap. Who's your tip to win? I'm gonna have to say two for two, Johnny Gindy. Ooh, he's a, a GT Academy finalist in the past. Roberto Montero starting down the order this race, and that will help his charge for the championship. Here they come now. Green flag away. Green defaults it. Here we go, 50 minutes of racing. Oh my God, big crash, big crash. Yep, I saw that. Big crash. Oh, big crash on the main straight there, Alvin, and it keeps going on now. The 88, Ruben Garcia's turned around. Uh, down near the front, though, Guindy still leads from Flores. Garabalo third, and Asiano Martinez fourth. Nothing changed there, but yeah, talk about that crash on the main street. It was really unfortunate at the drop of the green flag. We know that this track is really tough when, as, as soon as the green flag drops, you have 32 cars coming in, and well, it all started with a, a, a car starting piling up just a little bit here and there, and car just spun. I think that is car number 88, Ruben Garcia. Just, spotted and well that started the whole chain reaction yeah so we'll look at a replay of that shortly but at the moment johnny guindy comfortable lead ahead of flores it got very close there at turn number one now as you can see guindy on this back straight battles going on behind as well that is the driver of uh, ahead of Sergio Drelli, Hector Aguirre there, there battling with emmanuel lopez for that ninth position oh into the braking zone ferrari turned around and, uh, well, I couldn't see who that was. Was it Sir? It was Alex D'Alba. So Alex D'Alba back near the back of the pack there. And that cool tech racing car looks to be done and dusted at the moment. Looks to be done and dusted indeed, but we got a plenty of racing to go here. Now coming here after lap number one, and we're showing a replay of what happened on on lap number one coming into into the start finish line and we can see that Ruben Garcia just spotted and that started the whole chain reaction and this really kind of shows you the importance of being able to qualify in front of the field because the farther uh, the, the farther back you are the more of a risk you are well we just saw it there yeah exactly so you saw Ruben Garcia at the end of that replay 
turned around. Here it is now. They go through the final corner, and it just seemed that someone might have had a tap or just lost control up ahead, and then calamity now as the pile-up began. It's sort of the big one for a road course. And then uh, there's that, there's Garcia in the end, just finding himself on this roof. And, oh, this is, uh, that's Alberto Garcia. Almost made his way through, got turned around in the end. Now, I, I just, is there anything you can do in that situation, Alvin? It seems to come down to luck. It is, it is luck for sure, because it's pretty much being at the right place at the right time, or, pre or being at the wrong place at the right time. So there's really pretty much no, not much you can do. It's pretty much try to guess what, what, what will be the best scenario, try to position the car and just pray for the best. Yeah, so uh, back to the racing action, hopefully in a second. And um, Kugindi still leads by 1.5 seconds. So certainly that qualifying pace is true. It is not a fluke. And he's replicating it here in the race. There's the number 58 of Roberto Montero, who we want to see more of him, don't we, in this race. He needs to climb up the order ASAP. He's already up one position into P4. Whoa, car flipping upside down. That was through the S's. It looked like that was Hernandez there. It certainly was Hernando Hernandez, and he also was involved in that, in, that, uh, in that green flag incident. So definitely not the best day for him. Yeah, whoa, goodness me. And he, um, oh, he's up into the trees as well. Jeez. So that was such a bad um, accident for him. But back to the racing action once again. Uh, Montero's got 1.3 seconds now to Carabolo in front. Moises Carabolo, who, and that led motorsports car. He is, um, he's someone to be reckoned with, isn't he, too? He's got some good pace here today. I think he'll, um, I think he'll be a tough cookie to, to fight with. He'll definitely be a tough cookie to fight with, but now we are in lab number four and we are seeing the gap that Johnny Hidney has been able to open to Jorge Flores, a newcomer into this series. Almost a two second gap, but I also have to say Jorge Flores, he is he is not, he is not uh, slow for sure. I had the chance to race with him in another series and I gotta say that he is a really fast driver. Yeah, so. Uh, this is Latin America's best cohort of sim racers here today, and we're seeing them at their best, uh, hopefully for this next 50 minutes. Still 45 minutes remaining in this event. Gwindy leads by two seconds. That margin ever increasing ahead of Jorge Flores. So all quiet at the front at the moment. Carabolo third, Montero fourth. Nacional Martinez dropped a spot into that fifth position. We look at a battle here between the uh, 86. There's Sergio Dorelli on your screen. He's right behind. Hector Aguirre and Igor Orochi as well finds himself in this fight too. It's getting very close. We ride on board with Dorelli here in that Mafia racing car. Heading into the braking zone at turn 10. Has a peak. A bit too far back. And makes his way through on skates. Here's the uphill section, the blind section. These final two corners are very, very fun in, in pretty much any car. That wall on the outside really makes it scary. It is really fun for sure, but you also have to be careful, especially uh, coming under the Suzuki bridge, that you get that car straight because the car the, has a tendency to get really light and you are under full throttle, full torque, and you are in second, third gear. So perhaps not the optimal gear to be full throttle and also turning at the same time. So you really have to guess it, but at the same time, you have to get as much speed as possible because it leads you into the start finish straight. So try to balance all that it is really a, a tough act but so far so good for these drivers yeah and what you may have noticed on board there was the rear end camera and you can see Inigo Roche just trying to fight his way through the field in that yellow Ferrari behind there you can see there I love that camera it just makes it so scary you can see if uh, Inigo Roche makes a bold move here here they are on the back straight this is the best overtaking spot in the circuit right that certainly yes, it is the longest part and Sergio Dorelli trying to get a look here from Hector Aguirre, let's see if it, he keeps closing, he keeps closing, now he looks, he may have a look into the left, let's see, yeah, he looks into the left and under breaking, but not enough, Hector Aguirre still in P7. Yeah, Sergio Dorelli robust on the brakes, I like that, and so they continue away, we look behind Aguirre right now, and... Uh, excuse me, that was, I said Dorelli, didn't I? I meant Hector Aguirre robust on the brakes. So Hector Aguirre now through turn number one. This right-hander off camber, uphill, all 
I mean, the setup makes such a huge difference. Um, of course, though, big setup for these guys, so they just have to drive the car. It certainly is, and and that is one of the big one of the big things of this series. Pretty much 24 hours be 24 hours before the race, that car track combo it is announced. It is the same setup for everybody, so it is a matter of who can adjust to the setup. Yes, it is the same setup for everybody, but some people uh, may like the the. Uh, a car that is more uh, that is more loose versus a car that is more tight. So it is a matter of adjusting and, be, and being able to adjust. And well, it kind of looks like if we talk about adjusting to a setup, I have to say Johnny Newman has done the best job so far. Yeah, he has. He's driving the brains out of that car. And Emmanuel Lopez wants to do the same. He's the fourth car in this train there. He's just come on screen. Up the inside goes Sergio Dorelli on the Nico Rocha. And that was very close there by uh, the driver of Hector Aguirre almost had contact with an eagle so uh, right now Dorelli finds himself ahead of the bunch and that was a good move definitely a good move there for Sergio Dorelli in car number 86 now the question is is he gonna be able to close the gap in P6 to Jake Vita he has a it's only three seconds and I think he he can do it. If there is a person that has shown that he has the pace, it is Sergio Durelli. Yes, uh, uh, sometimes he has just just a little bit of bad luck, but de definitely a good driver. The advantage right now, 3.3 seconds. Look for that gap to come down. Yep, exactly. So head up, keep on pushing. Sergio, Jake Vita, now he's getting closer and closer. Oh, look how close this battle is now between uh, Juan Herrero and Chase Cabre. And come through the middle part of the lap, through the S's, past turn five. Bit of an overtaking spot here into six if you get close enough, although it's very brave. There's Chase, possibly. He's chasing at the moment if you if you want to make some puns. But then they go through the double apex here, six and seven. Then you want to get that good run on this back straight. He, he, it definitely seems there that right? Chase Cabrera, he got a good run. He got a little bit of a lock of coming into that double eight, uh, into that double apex, but. That's one of the good things about that double apex that it is camber, so it kind of allows you to perhaps try to push a little bit. But now, now let's see coming down. He'll chase cover has a look on the on the inside, but decides that no, uh, that cooler heads will prevail. And for some, and, and for now, Juan Herrero in P16 for now. Yep, yeah, Cabra going for that inside line there. He's got a lot of damage to that car too. You can see there on the rear left, a bit of damage to the Ferrari. So, and uh, he's. Doesn't have it easy at the moment. They head through turn number one now. The tight right hander going up the hill. And he's starting to back off just slightly on these two. So Juan Herrero started this race in P31, up into 16th, made up for half the spots, really. And uh, at the moment, the S's section, this is where we saw Hernandez flipping, wasn't it? Yes, it certainly was. That's that is the section turn number five that I said that you have to be really careful uh, taking the curves because if you take a little bit too much, well, it will happen what happened to, to Jerry Hernandez, but Chase Cabre made the move there on Juan Herrero into the second of the double apex and now he's pulling away. I think that was a big mistake there for, from card number 92. Yep, exactly. So Herrero unforced error and finds himself now in that 17th position. Drivers swapping up ahead as well. So they go through the main straight. And Alciana Martinez actually is into the pit lane. So we ride on board with him now. And he is in that HRC racing team car. So early pit stop for him. You want to make that pit stop before the competition caution with 25 minutes left. So a bit early, don't you think? It is a bit early for sure. But I also I also have to ask uh, what type of strategy Donaciano Martinez is, is trying to play because we're only we, uh, we're only 12 minutes into the race and yes I know that once the competition yellow flies you you will have a couple of pace left that you will be able to save fuel but what exactly is he trying to play that is what that is one of the big oh. questions but hey that's part of the strategy game so whatever he's doing it's well good luck <laughs> Yeah, he had an incident with Nick Sanchez, who was a lapped car. So at turn 10, um, I'm hearing word that him and Nick Sanchez got together, and that's why Martinez may have pitted. So we'll have a look at the replay here. And, well, we'll try and find it. 
they're going through turn 10 now. Oh, we'll find it shortly, but Martinez is just... Yeah, I'm not sure that he probably just wants to use that fast repair. Every driver gets one fast repair, and so that's probably why a lot of damage to that Ferrari. Probably that is the that is the case for sure, but definitely really unfortunate for him. But uh, trying to keep an eye here for some battles, and we got a, a battle here for the last step on the podium between card number 97 and card number 58. Moises Caraballo and Roberto Montero. I'm pretty sure that Roberto Montero, he wants that position and he's going to fight for it hard as much as he can. Yeah, but hasn't made too much progress this race, Montero, though he is stuck behind Caraballo, as we just mentioned. Go through turn seven onto this back straight here. Full throttle for 15 to 20 seconds. Montero into the draft. Where's he going to go? That inside line's been working out well for drivers. Carabolo seems to be defending it already, defending early into the downhill braking zone. They go alongside each other. Carabolo defends well. Montero has to tuck back into the racing line. No move for him that time around. No move for him, but also Moises Caraballo, he had to compromise his entry coming into turn 10, so that may allow Roberto Montero to get a better run on P3, but it kind of looks like well, the, the front straight is too short for So for now, Moises Caraballo and P3, but I think this, is, this, is a, this isn't going to last for long. Yeah. Oh, a lot of bumps there for Montero in the braking zone, but a poor exit for Caraballo. This is not an overtaking spot. Oh, goodness me. It looked like uh, Montero took a very early line and missed the apex at that corner. Here we ride on board with him now. And he's sponsored by Go-Kart Mania as well, the former uh, series name, as we know. Former series sponsor. Here they go through six and seven. Montero earned that Go-Kart Mania sponsorship, didn't he? Just absolutely dominated a year or so ago. He definitely earned that sponsorship and that pretty much shows that, you know, if you if you put the effort, definitely it does pay off. And right there for card number 58, Roberto Montero, it has paid off a, in a good sponsorship for him. But uh, for today, it seems like he's kind of struggling just a little bit there in P4. We are used to seeing him running in the front. But, well, in the front, well, we got this guy called Johnny Hindi. And, well, he's pretty much been lights out for the drop of the green flag. Do you think Greedy's taking it easy? Because now with points on offer, and I, I know the points on offer make drivers want to push a little bit more come that caution period, but he's got a three and a half second lead. It's not really increasing as much as it did to start this race, so he might just be taking it easy. He definitely is for sure. And, you know, there is really no point in trying to push the, the car right now. The, all he needs to do is make sure that by minute 25, he is still in P1 and he will, and he will, and he will receive maximum points as well the other thing being in front you can take it just a little bit easy so you can save just a little bit of fuel here and there it may not sound like much but considering that everybody has to come into the pits every fuel saving measure that you can do it it counts yeah look at this battle now ramon Pedro behind valentin arturo gonzalez so through the s saying look at the tarmac it's so dark at the moment Track starting to rubber in already. Just uh, 15 minutes into this event. And Vera still very far behind. Vera started this race in 25th. Uh, Valentin in front started in 23rd. So they find themselves in 11th and 10th respectively. Here they go on to the back straight here at Road Atlanta. Is this one of your favorite circuits of all time? Um, I... It's not really one of my favorite circuits. I'll say if, if there is a circuit that is my favorite, it is Spa Franco Shop. I think that track yes. is just pure magic. I love it. Spa, I love um, I love Monza too. We were there last week. Monza was always good. Let's have a look at this battle for P5. <laughs> Getting very close. And Vite alongside Sergio Dorelli, who's now ahead of the bunch. Dorelli in fifth, Vite sixth. Hector Aguirre wants a bit of the stake here. They all start to form up through this first sector at the moment. That was a good scrap going into turn one. Definitely a good scrap right there from Sergio Durelli. He he was able to catch all the way to Jake Vite in P5. Now he's in P5, but Jake Vite running into some trouble, and that may allow Hector Aguirre to take th that position as well. Oh, they're going to be alongside each other into six. Cambered corner. 
not easy for Aguirre, but Vite gave him all the respect there on the inside. So Hector Aguirre finds himself in six, and that just gifted Sergio Torelli a bit of breathing room right now. Don't forget Emmanuel Lopez as we ride on board with him on the back straight. He tucks into the slipstream behind the driver of Jake Vite. He could be losing a few too many positions here just before the caution period. Breaking zone for Lopez. Vite says no. Is that contact between the two? I think it seemed awfully close. I heard something. It was close for sure, but that, definitely there was a tire lockup and Emmanuel Lopez, not the exit that he wanted, but Jay Vite also had his exit compromise. And now coming into a start finish line, it looks like Jay Vite has that position safe for now. Yeah, and then you got Roche behind in that yellow Ferrari, as you can see. And now these five are starting to spread out. A good little five car scrap here for that top five spot. They head towards turns two and three. Very tight first sector and then through four at the moment. And you got Roche, as we know, sponsored by Renault. Oh, Aksaska. I can't even pronounce that. I tried it all Oksaka. morning, Alvin. Oksaka, that's it. Is that a Spanish word? Uh, it's actually a Mexican word. Uh, it's a it's a town in Mexico. So, yep. I I guess for more information, you uh, you are gonna have to ask Inigo Aroche. <laughs> <laughs> um, talking about Inigo Aroche, off camera, I think he went off. He lost a lot of room there at turn six. May have either made a mistake, locked up, but you can see the buffer there on this back straight. He's lost at least a second, and. Right now, Montero, is that him into the pit lane? It is. Roberto Montero, we can see into the pit lane at the right time. Is anybody else going to join him here near the back of the pack as well? So there we see Roberto. And no one joins him. Surprising. I think it is a good, for, I, I, I think it is a good call from Roberto Montero. He was fighting there with Moises Caraballo, but definitely not making any progress. So he said, well, you know what? If I'm going to stay behind him and not make any progress and destroy my tires, might as well come into the pits right now, perhaps get a little bit of clean air and try to make some more positions before that, before the competition yellow. Yep, so uh, there's not many DNFs this race either. Just quick random aside, but Guillermo Barales is still out there on the racetrack seven laps down. It's only Diego Ortiz Gerardo Hernandez, who had that amazing spin into the trees, and Victor Morales, who did not uh, start this race. So only three drivers who, out of the 32, are not actually racing at the moment. Montero exits the pit lane. I think that's a good choice for him. Look at all the clear track he has. Five seconds to Herrero in front. Eight seconds to Treras. It said 42, but that's just updated. Eight seconds to Contreras behind. Very smart pit stop. Very smart indeed, but he has a good train of cars in front of him. Uh, most of them, uh, they they may be lap cars, but some of them are also battling for position. So, really important for him trying uh, trying to manage that traffic. But we're all we we are almost five minutes to go into the competition yellow. So let's see what the what what the rest of the drivers will be able to do. Yeah, Vita is very very close here to Emmanuel Lopez, who's found his way. No, we had, oh, jeez, that was close. Coming out of the pit lane. Who was that? Coming out of the pit lane. Was that a lap car there? Um, couldn't quite, quite catch who that was, but uh, Vite, he's starting to push, isn't he, on the grass just a little bit there. Now through turn five, the very difficult corner wall on the outside. Uses all the track. That's legal. You're allowed to do that. They head towards the braking zone into six and seven. Basically a double apex corner. The camber through six really helps you as a driver, Alvin, but here's turn seven where it becomes blind and it's a lot more slower than that first apex. It's slower, it doesn't have the camber, and it's a lot tighter and you have to take it as best as you can because it leads you to this long backstreet where most of the moves are, are going to be made. So that is perhaps one of the most important uh, corners in here at Road Atlanta. And I think we got a spinner up at the top of the SSS card number 22. Car number 22 is Chase Cabra, and he's out of the event. Chase Cabra, so this is a serious incident. And we'll have a look at a replay of it right now. Let's see what happened to him. Chase Cabra goes through here. This is the highest point of the surf at turn five. And, oh, what's going on? Oh, he's just spun all on his own, hasn't he? And a couple cars, or one car behind. Unfortunate, just couldn't get out of the way. And 
Chase Palmer, it seemed like a soft hit. Oh, we do forget that he did already have damage before that. Yeah, he, he did have damage, and we, and we also have to remember that even though the contact may have seemed just a little bit up, uh, just just a little bit small, it was right there at the front wheel. And that's the last place that you want to take any damage. Yep, that was Jordi Maldonado who was involved as well. Jordi who I just see, can't really avoid incidents. And well, he seems to be uh, unlucky. Wrong place, wrong time for Jordi. Uh, but now this is a nice scrap going on. Just a couple minutes ahead of our caution period. The battle for P10, as you can see at the bottom of your screen. Alex Dialba is also behind this pack too. So Dialba, we know who was involved in instance early on in the event. He wants to actually, wants to make some moves, doesn't he? Quickly, he'll need to make them now before the caution period comes. You want them for sure. You want to make the move as soon as, as, soon as you can, because yes, it, it, it is P10, but that is the last point Spain position at the competition yellow. It is one point, but hey, one point can make the difference at the end of the championship. So while well, you can go for it. The yeah, Alba went screaming into the braking zone at turn 10 there. Here they go. Whoa, the Alba, has he lost it? He keeps it together. I thought he was maybe entering the pit lane even. I don't know if he changed his mind, but it seemed like he lost it because he was backing up the throttle. He's lost a lot of time here and crosses the main straight to begin another lap. So here we go through this first sector. Climbing up the hill. It's Alberto Garcia ahead. Valentin Arturo Gonzalez as well heading this three-car train. But that 10-second lead for Green Tea, he's earned it. It's all going to go to pieces soon. Then I got to pieces for sure, but now here is the question. He is crossing the start finish line now, and before he 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 crosses the the start finish line, I think where it, that's when the the competition yellow will fly out. So it's a little bit of a timing. So now the question is: Is he able to get into the commitment line and into the pit entry before the competition yellow comes in? If he is coming in, that we'll have to keep an eye on. One man is coming in is Jorge Flores, and he makes his pit stop at the right time. It's going to be a pit party, isn't it, right now? Everybody's going to be dashing into the pit lane. Uh, that caution can come out any time. Here they go through. But there's a few more cars coming through the pit lane. Flores should be able to exit anytime soon. There he is sitting, waiting patiently, biding his time. Drivers behind. There's Jake Vite entering the pit lane. And Jake Vite in that job racing team car on the main straight. Here's Johnny Guindy. He has not entered the pit lane. Is he going to make it in time, Johnny Guindy? Last time out, the caution came out just on 25 minutes on the dot. Here he comes through the final sector. Guindy continues away, does not make a pit stop heading into the caution period. But the rest of the drivers just able to make it through. Alex Dialba as well. Caution flag is out, as we said. You can see um, at the top of your screen. And drivers now having to slow down. Where's everybody going to feed in? Pace car's out. Yeah, I got confused for a second. I thought the pace car was one of the Ferraris who was uh, just ahead there of that. Uh, I think that's Vite. So Jake Vite finds himself behind the pace car. And that's something, Alvin. That pace car as well now. Jake Vite hasn't actually worked out for him. Unless it's, he's probably going to get the wave around, isn't he? Well, yeah, he is here. Every car that is a lap down will, uh, will get just one lap back. So if you are behind the pace car, they, uh, they are trying to pick up the leader, which in this case will be Johnny Hindi. Now, it'll be really interesting because from P1 all the way to P8, they will have to come into the pits. Also in P10, Andres Espinosa, Juan Herrero, and Lucio Almaraz Vargas. They all have, have to come into the pits. And once they come into the pits, it will be Jorge Flores and Roberto Montero leading the pack here for for the research so now it, this will become a really interesting race because once this whole once the whole field cycles where johnny yindi will come back in well we, we will soon find out yeah and this is interesting because right now jake vite obviously can't lead the field he's got a driver ahead of lucio i'm on where, where is lucio lucio is ahead of him yeah so jake vite is behind lucio there so he's just missed out by a few seconds. That could cost him nearly even. At the moment, the drivers on the lead lap who have made a pit stop. Jorge Flores, Montero, Fausto, 
Duran, Contreras, and Igor Rocha. Everybody else on that lead lap hasn't entered the box. But as you said, Alvin, we're going to wait now for those drivers. And they're going to want to enter that pit lane ASAP. Yeah, it, it certainly is. As soon as the as soon as the pits open, they will they, they will want to come into the pits because you don't want to get you don't want to get caught behind the anything else. If you have to come into the pits, come in as soon as you can because if you leave it for one lap later, the the other cars will will come in for sure. And once you come in, well, you will be even further back. Yeah, it's Johnny well, Green. Here we go. Yep, here we go. The pit party. Well, two car pit party at the moment. <laughs> Oh, make it one, three, four, five, six, seven. Eight. Everybody that hasn't come in will come in for sure. I like that. Uh, who's coming behind as well? Oh, look at that. That is a lot of drivers now. So they're all starting to feed in. I love this. This is my favorite moment of the race. It is for sure. And you know, th this is one of the great things about this series that the pit strategy gets all mixed up. We have Roberto Montero that decided to come early in early in well now it's going to pay off because now he is in p2 jorge flores he came before the he came before the competition yellow as well and now he's made that position well it looks like johnny hindi lost another position coming out of the pits well carabolo just beat him there Carabolo fast on that right foot and he's screaming away, isn't he? So Johnny Guindy finds himself in six at the moment. I don't think he's going to be any higher come this restart. So strategy not helping at the moment for Johnny. There he is in that Evolution Racing car. Supported by the very big team at ERT there as well. Um, well, I don't wait, Is there anything else to say? Has that been a strategy muck-up or are we wrong in the commentary booth? I don't think... I don't think we're wrong. I think Johnny Gindy is he is going for maximum points. And I think this is a bad strategy. He has shown that he has the pace. So now the interesting thing is he has five cars in front of him. And I gotta say the five cars that are in front of him, they are not slow drivers by any means. We have Jorge Flores, Roberto Montero, Fausto Duran, Inigo Aroche, and Moises Caraballo. All of them really fast drivers. So I'm pretty sure they will not make it any easy there for Johnny Gindy. But if there is one person that can make it work, it is Johnny Gindy for sure. Yeah, here they go now. All the Ferrari 488s on the main straight. Jorge Flores leading this event. And he was essentially the second quickest driver. Qualified second. And now he waits. The pace car will not go out this time around. Light still flashing on that eye racing pace car. That iRacing pace car, by the way, has no respect for anyone. It just but it just flies through everybody, doesn't it? <laughs> well, in a way it is, you know, but that is that is part of being the pace car driver. If we if we yeah. if if we go all the way back to Formula One, how many laps uh Bern Maylander has led? A lot. He's actually won a few races too. Yeah, that too. <laughs> yeah, I think he won um China 2009, possibly. I might be wrong, but there's been a few races he's won. Um, cars still. We're looking at race control. A few more cars being waved around the pace car at the moment. Uh, Paul Jordan, Curiel Enrique, Ruben Garcia as well, just recently. Jordi Maldonado is actually out of the event now, so something's gone wrong with Jordi Maldonado. As we know, Chase Cabre also on that DNF list. He's joined by Diego Ortiz, Gerardo Hernandez, who is still trying to find his way out of the bushes. And Victor Perales, who did not start this race. Um, someone we haven't mentioned, Alvin, is Roberto Montero. He is uh, in that P2 position. And he has a chance to win this race. He definitely has a chance, yes. He, perhaps he, he didn't get any points when, when the competition yellow flew out. But now he's going to have the chance to get as many points as he can maybe go for the win as well. Yeah, so just quickly as we know, the Apex E Series by Cooltech. Uh, sponsored by Cooltech as well. It's the number one premium gaming chairs brand in Mexico. Uh, focuses on unique design, ergonomics and comfort for the most demanding gamer and professional users. Em it employs premium materials. That's triple layer PU, automotive grade fabric and 100% real leather. Visit www.cooltech.com.mx and your series champion. 
to win a cool tech gaming simulator with steering wheels and pedals included there's also a random raffle prize who uh, for a lucky driver there's a few uh, a few placeholders they have to meet uh, we'll talk about that a little later on because the pace car lights are about to be up but that raffle is going to get very interesting we need a lot of attendance need to finish a lot of races pace car lights are out though alvin this is where it's going to get intense well here we go now we're coming here out of turn number 10 and it looks like we are ready to go back into green jorge flores leading the pack and roberto montero a close second try to see if he can get a good job at the job of the green flag and pace car is in full throttle and we go green flag again yep from the overhead cam as well it's going to get very tight between that fourth and fifth position between Joran Contreras and Carabalo here they go into turn number one and Flores still leads at the restart battling for third and fourth between Orocha and Fausto Duran as well Moises Carabalo finds his way into the fourth position as they fly through this first sector on the racetrack now drivers having to form up now and it seems to be all clean a much cleaner restart compared to the start of the race much cleaner restart and deeper. You can see all those marbles being kicked up all the way into the SS and Moises Caraballo getting a bond, uh, getting as wide as he can uh, coming out of turn number five and try to give chase there to Iniguaroche. We ride on board with Moises now. Here they go through turn seven onto the back straight as well. Miguel Maya's out of the event, so he is no longer going to score some valuable points here. Carabolo too far behind the third place driver of Anigo Roche. Johnny Guindi still in the sixth position behind. He hasn't made any progress on this restart, although he's alongside Fausto Duran Contreras here into the braking zone. There's Guindi. Around the outside goes Johnny. Oh, still alongside him as well. And don't forget Sergio Dorelli. Very brave is Sergio Dorelli, and he finds himself in the sixth position. Good stuff from Sergio. That's the reason he's a podium finisher. Yeah, so he's already right now uh, running in P number six, but Johnny Hindi running in P number five and trying to give chase there to Moises Caraballo. He has 16 minutes to go, and I think he will be able to do it, but I think that also opens the door for Sergio Durelli, a very fast driver, to try to try to stay as close to Johnny Hindi as possible and try to go with him as well. Yeah, boy, did that get close through turn 11 there. Sergio Durelli almost giving Guindy a little love tap as they headed through the right-hander towards the end of the lap. Now we're back live, as we know past turn five i think that's the driver making a mistake behind isn't it oh uh no emmanuel lopez there around the outside trying to find his way past basto duran lopez possibly up the inside no that rookie racing team car has no chance at the moment although this back straight proves the best overtaking opportunity proves the best indeed and johnny Hindi closing the gap really fast there on on Moises Caraballo and keep um, closing, closing just a little bit, but I think it's not going to be enough on this lap, but he is closing the gap, and he, and also the other advantage that, that Johnny Gindy has. Inigo Aroche is fighting with Moises Caraballo as well, so the more they fight, the more Johnny Gindy will benefit, and he will look for that opening and try to take those positions as fast as he can. Yeah, and that was contact between Lopez and Duran Contreras. Here they are on the main straight now. I don't know if Lopez has any damage. It was very, very light contact, but they head into turn one at the moment. We ride on board with that automotive racing car. Fausto Duran taking much tighter lines here than Emmanuel Lopez. And oh, it got so close there towards the end of the lap. But as you said, Flores only leads by half a second ahead of Roberto Montero. Johnny Guindi has to earn his, his P1 spot at the moment. It is not going to be easy. Here he goes, goes for a move possibly on Carabolo. Yeah, he, he looks like he's trying very desperate to get to to get those positions back because uh, the more he keeps fighting, the more Jorge Flores is going to open that gap and the, and, and the more that win is going to slip away. And, you know, it's going to be a real shame because he's pretty much been dominating this whole race from the drop up of, of the reflex and perhaps are being cut in that strategy, trying to go for maximum points at the, at the midway point it may prove uh, to be the what he did good but he gets that move done on Moises Caraballo going into turn number 10 that is one more position done next person in Iwaroche yep mows the lawn on the exit too but he's all clean through these final couple of corners and begins another lap here brilliant stuff by that very intimidating evolution racing car and boy does he look quick Johnny Guindy 
He's already close to Inigo Roche for that final podium position. Through the first sector they go. Almost look identical, don't they? The two liveries. <laughs> As we know, uh, Greedy has the Logitech sponsor on the front. So uh, Johnny Greedy through turn five at the moment. It's still close as well. We mustn't forget Flores and Montero. If they start to get into a little scrap here, it's going to make the job a lot easier for Johnny. going to make the job a lot easier for all the four cars that are here from P3 yeah. all the way to P6. So the more they battle, we may have a six car battle in our hands all the way to the checker flag. But Johnny Gindy trying to keep to try to keep close to Iñuaroche. Iñuaroche trying to break that break the draft as well so it is really a mind game but just behind him Sergio Durelli tried to get the position of Moises Caraballo going here down into turn 10 Moises Caraballo Sergio Durelli and it looks like no Moises Caraballo for now has the position but he has that extra compromise and Sergio Durelli may take that opportunity as well yeah Durelli is all too brave so here they go past the checkered flat oh sorry excuse me the start finish line and there's still 12 minutes remaining in this race. Definitely got the checkered flag, excuse me. And Dorelli now... I love turn one at this circuit. Lots of undulation. This is a classic motor racing circuit. And Dorelli getting closer and closer here, isn't he? Looks like he's almost giving a, a tap there for... Corabolo. We're having some issues with our feed at the moment, so... Keep you updated on this battle, but... Uh, Guindy still behind Enigo Roche, Montero still behind Flores. They got a lap car ahead as well, Alvin. He gets straight out of the way and into the barriers almost, that lap car. He hit the barriers indeed, but now we, uh, now he gets out of the way to let that, uh, to let that battle for P number three between Johnny Guindy and Inigo Aroche trying to keep up. It looks like Inigo Aroche got a bad exit and that may be the opportunity for Johnny Guindy to try to take that position and it, Johnny Gindy goes into the outside from Inigo Arocha. Inigo Arocha tries to defend the inside, and it looks like so far it. Johnny Gindy really brave, tried to overlap, but no, it's not gonna be enough for now. He played it very cautious there. I think he could have made that move done or uh, completed around the outside. Gindy now trying to find his. He's trying to do everything to get past Arocha. Uh, we'll take a quick ad break to sort out our technical issues. We will update you on this battle shortly.
welcome back to the Apex E series by Cool Tech. Uh, only one small bit of action during our technical issues. We apologize for that as well. Uh, Guillermo Brales timed out as well and so did our servers too. So uh, certainly something going on that's wrong, but we're all good now and we're back to the racing action. Johnny Guindy made that move on Anigo Oroche there, Alvin, and Oroche has no chance of fighting back at the moment. No chance to fight the uh, train that is Johnny Gindy. He is coming for P2 and P1. He is coming for that win, but he also has the... He is pretty much racing now three opponents. Jorge Flores, Roberto Montero, and Time. He only has seven minutes left and seven minutes to try to, to erase an almost four-second gap wall. It's going to be a tough ask for him. So these are critical championship points on offer at the moment because at the moment race winner will get 50. Johnny Guindy, who has the best pace all day, finds himself in third. He'll lose out on 15 points. So, I mean, that strategy now, there's still time left. I'm not going to blame him too much, but uh, there's a good little scrap going on behind the field, by the way, for P9. But uh, Johnny really has to uh, play this to perfection now. Play it to perfect it and didn't. Alberto Garcia and Andres Espinosa trading positions there uh, for that battle for what is P number eight, but also Fausto Fausto Duran and P7 at defending that position magnificently so far. Now coming here in the down into the S's. Fausto Duran, I think he's got he has the advantage so far, but he also has to be careful because Sergio Durelli and Donaciano Martinez, two very fast drivers, they are also here. They are battling for position all the way in the back of the field. And Donaciano Martinez and Sergio Durelli trying to get that position done. And let's see what happens. It, it looks like still still side by side there in the back of the field. It looks like Sergio Durelli may have the advantage and now oh, they're oh. into the wall. Oh, goodness me. A good battle all over now. Dorelli into the wall. Martinez there as well. Dorelli can get that car going, but Martinez has two wheels into the air. And Dorelli is now going to rejoin safely at number 86. We'll have a look at the replay of that, but uh, yeah, clumsy incident. It was definitely clumsy indeed. They were just side by side. It looks like Sergio Durelli just decided to track out and kind of forget. Well, you know, if you are side by side, perhaps you may have someone just right beside you. And he kind of forgot that it was Donaciano Martinez. And well, unfortunately, now Donaciano Martinez got the worst part of it. And it pretty much is race over for him. I've got a message for Jorge Flores and Roberto Montero. And it's coming from Johnny Guindy. He says, I'm coming anytime soon in the next couple of minutes that gap now two seconds down another second from only a couple minutes ago and he is within touching distance almost here they are on the back straight at the moment there we see johnny guindy the focus is on him there are the two leaders in front not too far away for them alvin and johnny guindy could find himself winning this race if he keeps on pushing hard That'll pretty much put the cap on this race is if if he is able to if he is able to win it. And you can see Roberto oh, Montero smelling oh. the desperation, trying to get that position. And Jorge Flores also defending well. That helps uh, that helps Johnny Gindi just a little bit more to close that gap just a little bit. Yep, 1.4 seconds now, and we'll see what it is across the line. So it went from 2.9 last time around, actually 1.8 seconds the cap now. That's Johnny Guindy to the leader, excuse me, 1.8 seconds. So 1.4 seconds to Montero in front. Here they are taking tight lines through the first sector. Guindy creeps in. Three minutes, just under four minutes remaining. What does Guindy do? Does he play the patient game or could he actually, the greatest move will be picking them off both at the same time. That'll pretty much be a highlight real worthy moment if he, if he can pick both of them at the same time. But it'll be really tough because I'm, I'm pretty sure that car number 58, Roberto Montero, is not going to make it any easier. And there's a car inside, a lap car that decides to just make it. And that, that allows Roberto Montero to go in the inside of Jorge Flores. But now going side by side, this also is going to allow Johnny Gendy to also close the gap even more. Oh, that's so close between Flores and Montero. That's the battle for the lead. Guindy also close as well. Into the braking zone at turn 10. The leaders go. Who's going to lead out of this battle? Contact as well. Flores is around. Guindy has to take avoiding action. That gives Roberto Montero the lead and some breathing room on Johnny Guindy with only a few minutes left. There's Jorge Flores. He's creeping uh, 
further and further away. He's actually in the fifth position. Oroshi and Carabolo find their way past as well. Let's look at the incident now on the replay. The territory was now coming here down into turn number 10. They were fighting side by side. They knew that Johnny Hindi was coming and they gave just a little, get, they, they gave space to each other, but as they were coming in, well, Roberto Montero, not much that he could have done. He stayed all the way to the inside and Jorge Flores tried to close the gap even more and well, he paid the price for it. Yeah, let's look at it on board from Greendy and he just backed off there. Smart thing to do and uh, back off. Don't want any damage to end this race as well. And he's uh, now, we go back live, he is within a couple of tenths of Roberto Montero here in the closing stages of this race. This could be, it's going to be very close when they cross the line. Not sure if we'll have two laps remaining or, or even one after this. It's going to be very close. We'll see what happens when they cross the line. But Montero already going defensive. Now rejoins the racing line. We will have two laps to go for sure when they come to uh, pass the, the start finish line. So this will be the two laps of his life for guard number 50, Roberto Montero. This is pretty much a repeat of last round at Monza. These two battling for the lead and they find themselves battling again for the race win again here at Road Atlanta. And Montero pushing way too hard. He almost lost it going into turn one. Carried too much speed into the apex. And Alvin is right. This is definitely the penultimate lap of the event. And it came down to the final lap last time around. Same story again for round number two. If anything goes wrong between these two, Anigo Oroche behind in third is ready to pick up the pieces along with Moises Carabolo. Greedy has a look here into six. Plays the patient game. Now onto the back straight. He's got a lot of time on his hands here to end this race. But Greendy, take one here. Not the best exit for him. He's going to tuck back into the slipstream here. Let's have a look if he can get the move done. Closer and closer he comes. Downhill braking zone of 10. He wants the inside line. He's almost on the grass there as they head into the braking zone. Was he too over aggressive there? Montero sustains the lead, heading out of the exit of this corner. Can Grindy get it done into turn one as we're now going to begin the final lap? I'm now coming here down for one more lap around Rota Lata. Roberto Montero and Johnny Indy once again battling for the lead again. But Roberto Montero really aggressive, trying to defend that position with all the might he can. And Johnny Indy with all that also powerful yellow and black ERT number 18, trying to get that possession from Roberto Montero. Now coming here down the S's. I think Johnny Indy is trying to position himself, but Roberto Montero, he is no slouch. He will defend it for all he can. Through turn five. Not the best corner there for Green D. Make this battle a little bit more interesting. Ruben Garcia is on the lead lap. He could be, could be lapped anytime soon. But uh, back straight again. Green D needs a good exit out of here. That's what he didn't get last time around. Not the best this time around. Actually, I take that back. Whoa, something's gone wrong for Montero. Has he run out of fuel? Or has he got a slowdown? Roberto Montero, the lead's all handed so He's easily. He's out of fuel. Johnny He's out of fuel. Roberto Montero is out of fuel. Oh, my God. What from all the great battle that we had, thinking about the great strategy, and all of a sudden, Roberto Montero out of fuel. And, well, Johnny Yendi now coming into the start finish line to take the win. Yeah, he, if, he, if he runs out of fuel now, he should be able to roll past the line for the victory. Johnny Guindy, two out of two wins to begin the series for the Apex E Series by Cool Tech. Brilliant stuff by Johnny Guindy. Montero, he's not going to make the finish line. He just needs to engage neutral. He finds himself in sixth now. I think that was Emmanuel Lopez uh, who's coming home in fifth exactly. So there's... Another driver going past Montero now. That's going to help him, putting Mutra on. It's going to get very close here, Alvin, towards the finish line. He's going to be on that racing line. The drivers have to take avoiding action. Definitely is down. So he keeps sliding back up, up P number 13. Oh, 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 my God. From going in P1 from a race win all the way to P number 13. And that kind of shows you the importance of strategy. How, you, how, how, how do you manage the fuel consumption and everything? Well... It didn't work for Roberto Montero, but I can tell you this. It definitely worked for Johnny Gindy. It kind of seemed like he had to fight hard for it, but with good strategy and smart driving, he got the race win here today. Good stuff.
from Johnny Guindy. I'm out of breath. Need a break. We'll have a look at the results in a second now. Uh, just to recatch my breath here in the RaceBot TV commentary booth. So these are the unofficial race results for round number two of the Apex E-Series by Cooltech from Road Atlanta. We're using the Ferrari 488 GTE this round, and it was won by Johnny Guindy ahead of Anigo Roche. That got very close at the line between him and Moises Carabolo, although they're both on the podium regardless. They were in second and third, as we said. Jorge Flores, who was involved in that late incident, finds himself in the fourth position. He had a chance to win this event as well until that late incident, as we said, at the turn 10. Chicane, Lopez, Alberto Garcia find themselves fifth and sixth. Good race from Fausto Duran, who could have earned a little bit of a better result, but he finds himself seventh. The rest of the top 10, Aguirre, Espinosa, and Arturo Gonzalez in the 10th position. Near our next 10 as well. There's Montero actually crossed the line in 13th in the end. And if you're superstitious, basically unlucky 13. Unlucky to run out of fuel in that final lap. He should have managed it a little bit better, but regardless of that, Alex D'Alba and Sergio Dorelli find themselves in 14th and 15th. Dorelli should have finished in the top five. Didn't get it done in the end. Big Vito as well, 16th. Ruben Garcia there just made it. Wasn't lacked by any of the top two. And then the rest of the field there, Enrique Romero down the next order. A few DNFs in the back of the pack there. Miguel Mayer as well, late in the race. Guillermo Brales had some technical issues. Chase Cabre, a lot of damage for him as well. Gerardo Hernandez, we need to get a rescue crew, Alvin, to find Gerardo Hernandez stuck in the tree somewhere. I don't think anyone's found him yet. Yeah, definitely was really unfortunate for him, but right there on the tree said, it it really goes to show you how tough this race was for many of the drivers in here today. But gotta say, Johnny Indy, he did a he did a good job. And well, speaking of Johnny Indy, he is uh, waiting for an interview. Yeah, we'll see if he's ready to talk at the moment. He might still have some uh, might still be drinking some champagne. I don't even know if he's caught his breath, Alvin, towards the end of the event. I have to say, before we speak to him though, he is um, again just dominant pace, but. The strategy, he didn't make it easy for himself. He didn't make it easy, perhaps, and that was one of the main things, but he also knew that he had the pace that he 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 could have taken it for sure. So it was just a matter of trying to do it. Yes, uh, sometimes you need a little bit of luck, and I think for Johnny Gindy, he did what he had to do. The strategy may, may have not paid off at the midpoint of the race, but at the end of the day, he made it work. Hey, so Johnny Gindy... How are you going, Johnny? Johnny joins us here now on the Race Spot TV commentary booth. What a victory. I'm out of breath. Alvin can't believe it. I don't know what's going on with Hugo, but it came all down to the final lap and a little bit of luck to your side along with your dominant pace. Yeah, it was definitely lucky, uh, Roberto. Well, lucky and unfortunate that Roberto ran out of fuel because it would have been a, a pretty good battle on the, on the second to last corner. But uh, yeah, I really don't know what happened uh at the midpoint when we got the safety car because i lost a bunch of positions i was down in seventh or eighth i believe uh, before the restart so i knew i had uh had a lot of work to do uh to get back to the front i struggled a little bit with inigo uh it took me a little bit too long to pass him uh, a lot more than uh, a lot more laps than i would have liked to uh but i still caught up to to the leading pack unfortunately they, they had an incident picked up a spot there and then uh after a little bit of battling, uh, Roberto unfortunately ran out of fuel. And you talk about the pit stop phase. Do you regret that, not pitting a little bit earlier? Because that's where everybody seemed to jump you, by pitting just a, a lap or two ahead of you. Yeah. Uh, did they pit, uh, like, during the race itself or under safety car? Yeah. No, no, before the safety car came out, they all made the oh, stop. Okay. That's how they jumped ahead, yeah. Yeah, I wasn't, like, because I, I really didn't know if I'd lose a lot of positions before the 25 minute mark uh, but uh so it's, yeah it's a tricky series because you, you have to keep an eye on what everyone else is doing and what the clock says so it's it's really tricky but in the end uh i had a lot more fun this way than than coming out in front of the pack for the second part of the race so at least there's that <laughs> yeah and um one thing i want to mention as well were you expecting to be this quick half a second almost 
uh, up on pole position. Did you just put in a lot of laps for this round, or does this car just suit you so well in that fixed setup? Uh, well, the setup itself is is pretty nice. The baseline in this car is pretty nice to drive, and it's quite easy to drive, especially compared to last week in the radicals. Uh, it's really stable, and you could just run uh, lap after lap fairly consistently once you get uh, used to it. But uh, in qualifying, I actually messed up uh, my one and only lap. I freaked out quite a bit uh, because my internet connection uh, died, uh, which it very rarely does, and it died just before qualifying. So I really had only one shot, uh, and I messed it up a little bit. I think I could have gone maybe three, four tenths quicker than that. And final thing, we'll give you... Again, another round. You've earned this victory. We'll give you a chance to say uh, thank yous to the ERT team. Even though, they, as you said last week, they're not heavily involved in this series, but um, all the support they give you as well as your sponsors and, and teammates and everybody else. Yeah, for sure. Uh, ERT, uh, the sponsors of the series, obviously, without them, uh, this wouldn't be possible. So Apex and, and Cooltech. Uh, and and really, everyone, everyone racing. Uh, I heard there was a, a few incidents uh, at the middle of the pack during the start of the race but up front the racing at least where i was the racing uh, looked fairly fairly competitive and fairly clean as well so that was really nice to see yeah thank you very much shani again race victor and very well earned there alvin towards the end of the event and one thing alvin is that not only has he extended his championship lead but does this put a dent in roberto montero's hopes of even coming back in this championship now, he's already taken a big points hit. I know he gets that drop round, but man, does this uh, demoralize you a lot? It can, de it can be, it can demoralize you for sure. But now it's a matter of it happened. You got a drop round, so now it's a matter of trying to regroup and coming into the into the next race, trying to do the best that you can. But you also have that uh, that little wild card that you don't know what track it is, you don't know what car it is. So you pretty much have that whole week to regroup and try to rethink your strategy, trying to see how can you beat how can you beat Johnny Gindy. Yes, strategy it may be one of the one of the solutions, but strategy only works if you get it right. So. Again, we will be back in seven days' time, but this is it for round number two here of the Apex E-Series by Cooltech. 50 minutes of racing action, as we said. Uh, that will take place on Monday, the 12th of March, hosting round three action of the series. With another car and track combination, the drivers will find out just 24 hours before the race begins. That makes it a lot more interesting. Coverage will begin as usual at 4 a.m. GMT. It will be on RaceBot TV, uh, of course. Thanks to all you viewers joining us for today's broadcast. I'm Jonathan Simone alongside Alvin Yeves and Hugo Luis producing behind the scenes. Thanks to Istvan Vallo, Andreas Werner, Simon Grossman, and Nick Thiessen for all their work in the production behind the scenes. This has been a RaceBot TV presentation, as we say so long, from Road Atlanta. What a race it was.